one of the most exciting things about the Chachka is when I introduce something as Dingerback and then it comes up on stage as Dinderback. So this is why I'm the clown. All right. Um, anyway, our next speaker, um, a champion of slam poetry. Now I know you're all thinking of Brad Pitt and Fight Club. I'm not quite sure if this is going to be quite as judgmental, but it may get a little bit crazy. All I know is if somebody wants to come up and actually talk about, well, we'll let him come up and talk about it for us. His name is uh, Sean Shea. Come on up to the stage. We're going to do a little mic check with Sean before we get started, so bear with us one moment. Mic check, checking to the voice is silence. <laughs> you know when you go to the dog pound and every dog comes up to the end of the kennel and does that doggy audition dance? This is the dog that we eventually adopted bombing out on the audition. Hey, 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 you guys, you guys, come over here. No, 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 over here, you don't want that chihuahua with the bladder problem or that kleptomaniac cocker spaniel. You want a good dog like me. My name is Snorkels and I love you already. It's true. I don't want to be in this cage, so I prepared a PowerPoint presentation why you should take me home. It did have a soundtrack, but I couldn't get permission from Kenny Loggins. I am a pug dog. And we are a wise and ancient breed of puppy. We were bred to look like lions for the Buddha and to keep fleas off the Empress of China. We're also fine truffle hunters. We go way back, like more than 15 years back. Pug dogs still tell stories about the dodo bird. Bigger than turkeys hopping around, not flying nowhere. They were delicious. I'm sorry we ate them all gone. <laughs> And there was a time when we used to live in New Zealand and there were great moa moa birds, 12 feet tall. Guaucho, the elder pug, says they were like big smoky sides of bacon walking the land. <laughs> the big tasty birds shouldn't have laid such delicious eggs. I'm sorry we nom them all gone too. <laughs> I am named Snorkels after my ancestor, the ancient Snorkosaurus, named Dino. He belonged to Fred Flintstone long, long ago in the 50s, way back when fossils were made. See, I'm just a Dino with a nose job. Hey, I'm not saying us Pugasauruses were responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs, but we did have a tasty barbecue sauce for twice in our house. So why did such a distinguished puppy as me get locked up in the dog pound? Well look, some dogs are in here because they bit someone or peed on the couch. Me, I'm in here because I got pop laundering drug money for the Japanese Yakuza. I'm in the doggy protection program. I can't go back, I'm already missing a dog. They want to cut off my tail necks. Come on, I'm a twofer. You cook me some breakfast and I'll cook the books from tax time. I know a Boston Terrier in Barbados. He'll take care of you. Huh? No? No? Well, adopt me anyways. I'm really a good dog. And I'm really, really cute. Like, cuter than your children. <laughs> Please let me out of this pound and into your home and hearts. If you do, I promise to be a dog. I would love to be your dog. You, you live inside, right? <laughs> okay, then I would love to be your dog. I promise to run to the door and say hello to you every day when you come home, because I'll probably need to pee by then. <laughs> I promise to poop outside unless it's an emergency or I have to get back at someone. <laughs> I promise to eat only the food you give me. Well, okay, and a little bit of the cat's food. And whatever I can beg off of people in the street, or any dead birds I can find. But mostly I'll eat the dog food you give me. As long as you don't buy that beautiful craft they feed us here in the big house. It's like the dog food of dog foods. I promise to eat whatever snacks people give me. Even if your children give me Brussels sprouts. And we all know Brussels sprouts have consequences for little dogs like me. <laughs> I promise to be friendly to all dogs and bark only at dogs I can't run up to and sniff their butts, like all the dogs I see when I'm in the car, or famous dogs I look up on YouTube. <laughs> I promise to shed only on horizontal surfaces. 
And I promise to defend you against all enemies like the landlord, the vacuum cleaner robots, and your cat. And in exchange, could you please protect me from sewer twins? I'm so scared of sewer twins. Don't flush me. I promise to sleep very close to you at all times to protect you. And I think you're right between you and your girlfriend is the warmest place to watch. And while I'm there, I expect lots of belly rubs against my disturbingly large doggy nipples. <laughs> Do I snore? <laughs> Boy, Ali, that's the best part. <laughs> I even snore when I'm awake sometimes. <laughs> when I get to your house, oh, I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna rub up against everything the cat does. I'm gonna eat dessert off of your plate, and I'm gonna sing and practice the piano for hours. Please get me out of here. If you adopt me, I'm only gonna need to be walked three times a day. I'll just go to the same bed there where you do to get spayed and neutered. <laughs> but believe me, trying to schedule that between my random heat cycle is going to be worse than trying to figure a high tide boat schedule during Greek Orthodox Easter. But I'm willing to make sacrifices. If I have to lick myself when company is over, I promise to turn my back to them. <laughs> and if I have to lick your underwear when you don't pay attention to me, well, that's just the price of having a dog. <laughs> I know you wanted a dog to blame your thoughts on. But well, I'm so nervous it's going to be a lot of silent but deadly for a while, and you don't want to switch blame with me. I could peel paint. Did I mention the Brussels sprouts? Okay, good, good. Speaking of which, as a dog, I have a responsibility of working on my doggy breath all night to impress you with. Normally, if I really wanted to impress you, I'd spend half the night bobbing for apples in the cat box, but this will have to do. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Maybe a little more rancid sardine. No, no, some onion fungus. Oh, okay, I can tell you really want me to wrap this up. So here's the bottom line. If you take me home, I will love you more than anything. Except for bacon. <laughs> but in return, I will give you lots of love and you'll give me lots of love and sooner or later you're gonna give me some bacon, right? Lots of bacon? Maybe if Wendt has a restaurant, burn some of it, you could give me some for medicinal reasons, maybe powder it, you know, put it in milk like some Dobby Ovaltine. Oh, it's so hard when I get the bacon shakes. My sponsor says to go to my happy place, but that's a house made of bacon. Look, it's not like I have a bacon problem. I mean, if you and bacon were hanging off a cliff by your delicious fingernails, I would... Okay, let's not think of unpleasant thoughts. They're just making me hungry. Okay, I admit this hasn't been my best job interview. But take me home anyways. I can be cute and vulnerable and hairy. Who else could do that? Hey, come back here. Where are you going?